Praise be Jesus and Mary. During his public life, our Lord's authority was often challenged. The chief priests and the elders in today's gospel ask him, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? In other words, they're asking him, who do you think you are? Right? The challenge to his authority was in reality a challenge to his identity. Who do you think you are? In the responsorial psalm, we say, teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways. We now enter into the Christmas novena. And we should say this often during these days. Teach me your ways, O Lord. One way we can see this novena is a time where we prepare to see the way God exercises his authority. The way God exercises his authority. The very word authority in Latin comes from autoritas, which comes from another word, augere, which literally means to increase, to elevate. So it implies someone from on high position of authority, stooping down to those who are below to augere, to elevate. St. Paul in the letter, his letter to the Philippians says and writes, though he was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself. Coming in human likeness, he humbled himself. In the incarnation, God exercises his authority by stooping down to his creatures to elevate them, by offering them a share in his life through grace. John Paul II loved to quote this line, only in the mystery of the word incarnate does the mystery of man take on light? So by exercising his authority in the incarnation, he reveals not only his identity, but he also reveals ours. Only in the mystery of the word incarnate does the mystery of the word, the mystery of man take on light. The fathers of the church said it this way, God became man so that man can become like God. So do you see what's happening here? Our Lord's authority was often challenged. They challenged his authority and in doing so challenged his identity. But when God exercises his authority, in the incarnation especially, it's him who challenges us. Because not only does he reveal who he is, he reveals who we truly are, and thus challenging us to live according to our great dignity as children of God. And he doesn't force us to do anything. In fact, he comes as a baby. He comes as a baby, and in doing so, he gambles on our freedom. This is the Christmas challenge. He places the ball on our court and says, I challenge you to live according to your dignity. And that means to leave the life of sin behind. That means live according to the life of grace. 
How seriously are we taking this? Our, how seriously are we taking our spiritual lives, right? God became man so that man can become like God. And for this to take place, God sent the Archangel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary. And the Archangel Gabriel greeted her, Kaire kekaritomene, hail full of grace. It's interesting that in the Greek, the term grace comes, in the Greek it's karis, the Greek word is karis, and it has the same linguistic root as the word joy. So true joy comes from the grace of God. So as we begin our Christmas novena, let us always remember that the true joy of Christmas is not so much having a lot of things, but having the one thing necessary, the grace of God. May Our Lady, full of grace, lead us, especially during these days, into the fullness of true Christmas joy. Praise be Jesus and Mary.